We're going to start with a fast API server with a few CRUD operations. Then we're going to put it inside of a Docker container. We're going to push our code to GitHub and use GitHub Actions to build that Docker container. We're going to then push that Docker container to a GitHub package registry. Next, we're going to use Terraform to build out our Kubernetes cluster on Azure. And lastly, we're going to import our GitHub package into our Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so we just finished up our fast API server. Let's get into it. This is going to be extremely basic. I wanted to make it really easy for you to jump in here and make changes yourself. So we're going to use just a local data store. One thing you could add in a database if you wanted to do that. There's a lot of things you could do to enhance this, and I would strongly recommend doing that. Our baseline here, though, so we're just going to have an app, which is the fast API server. And then we define a class, which is the item. And it's going to have a name and a description. We create a store, which is the Python list. And then we have our three routes. So we have our get on the path items, we have a post on path items, and then we have a health check, which just returns status 200. The get request is just going to return whatever's in our store, and then the post request is going to append the item to the store and then return that item to say it's been added. And lastly, I included the three sample requests. The other important files here, we have our requirements.txt, and then I used a virtual environment to spin this up. And inside of the readme, there's some documentation on how to get going. And now I'm going to move on to Docker. Okay, so we finished up the Docker file and the GitHub action to deploy it. So let's go through that quickly. Starting with the Docker file, this is the base one that comes with the documentation for Fast API. So we're going to use a Python 3.9 base image, set the working directory to the code directory, copy in our requirements.txt, install requirements, and then copy in our application. Then the last entry is the command, which we run the fast API and we put it on port 80. For interviews, this is a really important topic in case you get asked it. The order of a Docker file, which the lines are run, is important. The lines correspond to the layers of which the, the image is built. So you want to make sure that whatever's changing most frequently happens at the end. We put our requirements entry in before our application code because we know that our application code is going to have changes more frequently. So the image will cache anything that has not changed. So if our requirements don't change, we don't have to run pip install every time we build. We'll start immediately at this copy app command. So it makes it much faster. Whereas if I move this up top and now I run copy app and app has changes, every time app changes and I do a Docker build, it has to copy the code and then copy the requirements and do pip install every single time. In this sort of application, it doesn't really matter because we're installing two requirements. But when you get to Docker images that can be up to, say, a gigabyte, it can save a lot of time. Then with the GitHub action, I created the GitHub action called deploy images to GHCR. I found someone's template that I was able to use and make a few changes for us. I had to add this username variable. You'll see it's referenced down here as ghcr.io slash and then my username. So this would be jgeisler14, which is my GitHub handle, and then slash DevOps Python, which is the repository name, and then we tag it with latest. I was hoping to use GitHub Actor as I defined up here, but that uses capitals and you can't have capitals inside of your tag. So we had to go this route. When you're building this yourself, make sure that you make that change in this file. Now over in GitHub, you can see the success because our GitHub action ran and was successful. I'm going to open the actions. And then if I go to the latest run here and open up push image, you can see this is our job running. It logs in the container registry, builds the image, and then pushes it to the registry. And then if we come back to the code tab over here on the right side now, you see packages. I can click on DevOps Python. This is now a container registry that's storing my image so that I can pull it from other places. One important note, if you come over here to package settings, check this box so that you have admin. And then under inherited access, you're going to want to make sure that this is inherited. And this repository is public. If you don't have it public, you're going to have to set up a PAT token, which is a personal access token. So I would recommend making this public since it's a resume project anyway. You want people to come to your GitHub and see it. Now that that's done, we're going to get into the Terraform to build out our AKS cluster so that we can start using this. Okay, so working through the Terraform AKS cluster right now, I'm leaving this link in the readme. This is an example from HashiCorp that I'm using to get started, and then I'm going to configure it to our needs. Coming into the code base, I'm working on applying it right now, so these are the commands to start. You'll run az login, and then Terraform init, and then Terraform apply, and let's see, is it? It actually just finished applying, so I'll go through that in a minute. Open up our main.tf. This example uses a data block to pull in the Kubernetes cluster once it's built. 
We configure our two providers. So we need to configure the Kubernetes provider and the Azure RM. This is important. We're gonna use Terraform to create our Kubernetes cluster, but then we're also gonna use Terraform to manage the Kubernetes resources inside. That's why we have both of these providers. We have two modules here. So there is the Kubernetes module, which this just creates a local file. So when you run this, it will actually use your path that you're on and create a kube config. So you can see it's actually in here. I'm not gonna click on that because it will have secrets inside of it. And then the AKS cluster, this is where we actually create our cluster. We're gonna create a resource group using some variables and then create the cluster from the other. Then inside of that resource group, we'll provision the cluster. And last thing I wanna go through right now, we have some variables set up. So I'm using the location West US2 and your tenant ID and subscription ID, you're gonna to have to get these for yourself. They will be unique to your account. So make sure you pull your values and update either in this file or setting through environment variables for these to run. Now in the Azure portal, these will be the resource groups that you see when it's done building. One of these is the network watcher, that'll be automatic. The other one's managed by the Kubernetes cluster. We created this TFK8, so I'm gonna open this one. And you'll see there's just our Kubernetes service inside of here. There's not too much to see here. You can see what size we set it to, which should be the smallest, so it's not gonna be expensive. You can go through and check these out as you build it if you wanna get familiar with everything in here, get familiar with it. But from here on out, we're gonna access our cluster just from the CLI. Now to check access to our cluster, I'm gonna go make sure everything's okay. First, we need to run export kubeconfig equals dot slash kubeconfig. This will just overwrite your default kubeconfig file if you already have one set. Now I have kubectl alias to just k, so I'm gonna run k get pods dash a, and it looks like all of our pods are running. So we have Azure CNS, Azure IP, Cloud Node Manager, Core DNS, CSI, Connectivity Agent, Kube Proxy, and the Metric Server. These are all of the default pods that will come with your Kubernetes cluster when you build it on Azure. Now we're gonna get into configuring it ourselves. So it looks like we just got it working. Now you'll see our health endpoint is the status 200. If I come back to my terminal, here is our kubectl port forward, the API namespace and the service, and then we're doing port 8080 to port 80. So let's do k get service dash a, and here's the service we're referencing, and then we created a deployment, which creates these pods. So I'll do k get pods dash n API, and here are the three API servers that we're now running. I'll show you guys the Terraform in just a second that we finished with that. First, let's go test our curl command. So if I come back to my VS code, let's go ahead and copy this one out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do curl. And you'll see there are no items right now. And then let's go ahead and curl this again. And now we just put an item in there with our post, curl it, and there's our item, great. So this is working, let's go through the Terraform. So you have this working, it was actually pretty simple. Inside of our Kubernetes module, the main.tf here, I create the namespace for the API and then create a deployment. This deployment is called API deployment, references the metadata here. And then most of this stuff you can leave alone. Down here at the spec, so this is where we're pointing to the container. The image is now our GHCR. So this points directly to our GitHub package registry. I put in a variable username so you can enter in in the variable .tf here. And then, and it references DevOps Python, make sure that matches your repository. And my tag is latest. The name is what is actually gonna be named on the server. And then we specify some limits for the CPU and the memory. Lastly, we set up a liveliness probe. So this is why we set up that health check where we return a status of 200. That's to make sure that our service is working. And the great thing about Kubernetes is that if it dies, it will reconfigure it. So I'm gonna show that quickly. K get pods dash N API. And so let's see 548 is how long these have been running. So I am just going to delete this. K delete pod dash N API. There we go, pod deleted and two seconds, it's already creating. So that's the benefit here. And those health probes are also allow us to, we could put in some monitoring. So that would be a great extension of this application. If you wanna set up some monitoring with Prometheus and Grafana and check the liveliest probe and then report back to it. Let's just check this one more time. And there we go, status running 21 seconds ago. So now this is working. Moving down here, we have our API service. And this one's very basic. It just says, go from 
take the service on port 80 and the target port is 80 because that's what we defined in our Docker file here. So the service is port 80, the target port is port 80, and then our service gets created. And so if I come over to my terminal, that is why this command here, just to explain it briefly, we're port forwarding the namespace API and it's the service that's called API service. And we want to make, make a connection from our local host port 8080 into the service of port 80. And that's why we, when we run this, it moves it to our local host here. The last thing we're going to test now live, and I hope this works, is we are going to make some changes. So I want to show the CI CD aspect of this, how we can make changes and how it automatically pulls. So I'm going to go ahead and do a live edition here, and I hope this works, of the, let's see, hello. Actually, yeah, let's do hello. And we'll change this to hello. And then this is going to return a message that says subscribe. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and push this code. So I already have it added. So I'm gonna do git commit dash M final push, git push. And then let's come over to our GitHub and see these changes. And so real quickly, while that's running a quick note, make sure that you run Terraform destroy when you are done with this or when you're not using it because that Kubernetes cluster will run up your cost on your cloud bill very quickly. So to show the current state that we're, right now we have our containers here, they have all been running for, the one we deleted is six minutes and the other ones are 12. If I go to localhost 8080 slash hello, you'll see it doesn't work. But our new image has just been built. So let's go back to our summary, come over to our code, come over to our packages. And then if we look, our latest has just been pushed as of two minutes ago. So let's check our pods again, see that they still have not been updated. So this is where something like Argo CD comes into play, which I'll put a card here for my video on that. We've defined our deployment to by default because it's using the latest tag, it will always pull the latest, but that only happens when it's created. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these now, delete all three of these this way. We can use something like Argo CD to do this automatically for us. So it would catch that change happened on our GitHub and then it would trigger to delete the old pods and pull in the new ones. Now, all I had to do here was delete it and it happens because I don't have Argo CD installed, but let's list out our pods again. And now you'll see they're all age 11 seconds. When this pod gets created, it pulls the latest from that GHC repository. We don't even have to do anything else besides that. So now if I go back to our local host, go to, oh, I need to port forward it. Let's go find that command. And it's running and there we go, subscribe. If you made it all the way to the end here, I really suggest you go spin this up on your own and you have your own instance of it. It's gonna give you so much confidence and so much understanding that when you get into an interview, you're gonna be comfortable talking about this in any sort of DevOps engineering interview. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I'll put a link here to the rest of my DevOps bootcamp playlist. Thanks for watching.